Hey everybody, I'm Lex. I'm Shane. Happy New Year, everybody. Again, if you were uh, on, on the, uh, the pre-show, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of uh, mass hysteria. We understand that, you know, there's some, there's some new vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. We are aware, trust us. But we're not going to add to what I consider at this point just to be just kind noise, of, yeah. yeah, noise. A lot of misinformation. I don't want to speculate. Been a sysadmin for a long time. Going to wait, marshal facts, figure out if there's anything that we can do, and by we I mean PDQ, package-wise, collection-wise, to help mitigate these, these problems. They will be forthcoming. Keep an eye out for our blogs and, and notifications because, you know, if there's something that we can do to help, we want to we'll add to it. it. We just don't want to add to the hysteria. Um, we're not just going to throw a new package out there without without doing some testing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But just keep keep know that we're on top of it. We're looking out for you. Yeah, even though this the subject of this is is cleaning up your environment, uh, where we are aware of that, but we're not going to add to the noise and and the contradicting information that abounds. We are talking about Meltdown Inspector. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. For those that are watching in the future. <laughs> <laughs> back when these were back when these were back when these were, back when these were thing. Oh yeah, I remember those. Yeah, way back in the day. Anyway, so uh, welcome. Let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and, and, and jump into it. So one of the things that I, I've certainly noticed in all the different um, uh, customer sites, and I've gone to quite a few of, of your sites, one of the biggest problems I see it's not necessarily an issue with PDQ, it's an issue with the Active Directory, most specifically with computers that no longer exist. Basically orphaned records in there. Yeah, you, you've got these, these and, and some of you might have processes and procedures in place for your, from your company that says you cannot delete these Active Directory objects. Others just haven't gotten around to it, but I'll look at inventory and I'll see sometimes, sometimes you know, 70% computers that look offline and or they're, oh, and they're, they're, they're error. They're, you look at the errors for the last scan. There's no DNS record and stuff. They've just been gone for so long. Um, it's like clean that up. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you a couple of different ways of cleaning up your AD. And don't worry if you're not allowed to delete objects or whatever. There's a couple of ways you can do this to make sure that that you retain the objects and still don't show them in PDQ. Why live with the clutter? Yep. Right. Agreed. So uh, to start that off, I'm going to bring Chris up our PowerShell expert, and uh, he'll probably, th hopefully Chris is going to throw a Zap Brannigan in there just to help <laughs> calm everybody down. Calm everyone but Chris, all right, so Chris, I'm going to step out, uh, and Chris is going to just talk about the biggest issue, I think, as far as clutter, oh, which yeah. is Active Directory Active Directory. Objects. Now, interesting thing about that is, obviously, Chris comes in, and it's all going to be PowerShell. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, straight up PowerShell and Corgis. But, uh... On Zap Branding equals yes. I'm the man with no name. Zap Branding at your service. Um, I'm the man with no name. But also, this is one you might appreciate as well. This is what I was going to say in the pre-show. I'm talking really fast, aren't I? Yeah. In the pre-show, I was going to mention and, and shout from over there, Kiff, where's the little umbrella? That's what makes you the scotch on the rocks. But um, <laughs> I, I was too late. Anyway, so I guess we'll just dive right in. So okay. I have this set up. Right now, we don't have this in the bonus content because I don't want to package it as is because I don't want you just to take this script and just Launch run it, it yeah. right? So I, I really want you to think about this. In fact, I'll probably, uh, maybe I'll summarize this up as a blog and get something, you know, quick out for everybody to take a look at with a couple different examples that you can run. But I'm just going to run you through it real quick to show you what's possible in PowerShell with Active Directory and why you should do this because... Automation is awesome. It's the best. Yeah. Especially when you're syncing uh, Active Directory with our product, if you have old records or records that aren't tied to a, a machine, like a computer objects in Active Directory, if you're syncing and that OU is being synced, you're going to see them, but you're not going to be able to scan them. Yeah. So. Okay. So what does this script do, Chris? Yeah. So I will. I'm just uh, on a, a machine here that has uh, this script loaded up. What you can do? There's a couple different uh, commands in PowerShell. These commandlets. One is git ad object. The other one's git ad computer. They do the same thing. One is more generic. I can grab a computer, a user, a, a, a service account, a, a, a password policy, anything. But I do like to be specific where I can, so I do prefer to use the Git80 computer. So that's what we're doing here. The great thing is, is you can identify a computer in Active Directory with these commandlets by multiple methods. And here I can specify the name. 
I can specify the, the DN, the distinguished name. I can specify the GUID or even the SID of that object, and I can get the result. So in this case, I have a, an object called test. So if I run just this line to get test, I don't have to highlight all of it, but I'm just showing you that's what I'm running. I'll actually get that result back uh, from Active Directory after running that command. So this is where you got all that information from. Exactly. Okay. And so I can, I can do that from that. I can do it from the distinguished name. I, I spoke with Jordan earlier. He's done a lot of Active Directory management with PowerShell. And he and I are in agreement. Typically, we use the distinguished name just because it's the easiest to really follow. It's the full path of the object yeah. and the object itself. It's clear. I can run that as well, and you can see it's the same result. Uh, you can also do wildcards in it while, while filtering, so I can get multiple machines here. So if I run that, I, you can't really see the results here. Test 2 there also. Yeah, test and test 2. So if you're doing batch machines that you know are named with a particular prefix or suffix, you can do that. And you can identify them. And I'm not going to go into too many details here and, and spend too much time telling you how to identify computers you want, because that's up to you. Yeah. I, I don't know. Pick I can tell one that you, works for you. Yeah, I can tell you do all the computers, but you might be upset at the results. So, but once you have those, uh, we'll get back to this in a sec, you can actually do things like move them to a separate OU. So in our case, one of the, one of the things that uh, I know I prefer to do mm -hmm. is most places that I've worked, we don't like deleting objects necessarily, but we do like to keep them for our, you know, for archiving. Mm -hmm. For some, whatever reason, uh, the powers that be, business decision is made, don't delete them because we want to keep them for historical and reporting purposes. So I just move them. I create a separate OU that nothing else should be in except my inactive accounts. Just archived, basically. Yep. Hmm. And so what I can do here is I can get, I'm just simplifying this part of the command to get just the name. So rather than mm -hmm. use the distinguished name or the GUID or SID or whatever, I'm grabbing the computer object test, and then I'm piping it over, sending the results of that over to this command, move AD object. And I can then specify where I want it to go, this target path. And I, if I run this, I'm going to scroll over and show you that I'm using a fantastic feature of most commandlets, which is the what, what if. if. I can tell this to run this command with a what if uh, parameter set, so I can see what would happen if I did run this without actually running this. It's fantastic. Well, test before launching. Yeah, I mean, gone are the days. I mean, I'm sure all of you here have done the same thing when you're like doing, you know, Dell start up, whatever, and you think, is this what I really expect? You hit enter, and then as soon as you hit enter, you realize, no, that's not what I expect, but it's too late. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. So if I run this, you'll see. Oh, it found this guy. It's performing the action move on that target. It found that, that particular uh, item, using its distinguished name here, you can see. And it's going to move it to the new one, mm -hmm. which I have as this guy, target path, old, do not sync, whatever. So you can move it. The other options here are just as uh, easy, if not easier, where I can actually take that same computer, pipe it over, and run disable that account. So I could go disable that account. I could go delete that account, remove that computer, or remove that object. All these are what if, so it's not actually happening because someone might scream, probably me. Okay, so I got a question so, for you. It's great. We can put test in. How do I automate that so it goes through and does it myself? Fantastic. I'm going to come back up to this little portion here. And this is why I want to not have you run this willy-nilly, so I'll get a blog summed up for everybody. I want, usually the use case is, I want everything that's older than 60 days, 90 days, whatever. Mm -hmm. You have a date set. Yeah. Uh, but you want to just archive them. And if they, they end up having to be used later, so be it. You can then move them. But one of the best things you can do is define a date. And, and dates, in general, they're, they're always additive. So dates are always growing. They're, they're stored as you know, these, these, these numbers that you know, this second is greater value than the previous second. And so what you do is you actually say, I want to take the date from seven days ago. So I take today's date minus seven. There's my chunk of time. Now, do I want the computers that are within this chunk of time, meaning from seven days ago up until now, or do I want the uh, chunk of computers that's from this seven days and older? older. Yeah. And so I can specify that with an operator using greater than or less than. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm defining the date. I just decided you'd be a really good math teacher. I love math. <laughs> math, just, just <laughs> look around you. Um, look at that video if you haven't, it's great. <laughs> side note. So what I'm doing here is in Active Directory, when you're running these commandlets, just side note, it doesn't always grab the default properties because okay. uh, there's so many of these, these, uh, these attributes in Active Directory they're called. I don't want all of them. I just want a couple here. So that's why I'm specifying just the name and the last logon date. But what I'm doing is I'm using a filter to say I want the last logon date that is less than what I specify here, this date. If I run this date, I can go look at the value of date and see that it is for December 28th, seven days ago, just like what we just talked about, seven days. I want everything that's l older than that older than seven days. 
So I can take that and then I'll just select those same fields. So if I run this line, I get all these computer objects that have not been logged in in the last seven days. You can automate this by throwing it into some schedule task or throw it into a PDQ deploy. I'm going to step in. When, you, when he says not logged in, please just, di I want you to differentiate between a machine login yes. and user. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, these are computers. User. Yeah. These are computer yes, computer objects. Okay. Correct. You can do the same for user accounts. Yeah. Uh, instead of using get 80 user, or excuse me, instead of using get 80 computer, you use get 80 user, and you can do it for users. So it's fantastic. It's very customizable. And if I want to automate all these machines that haven't been used in a while, I can. I can do the same thing for, uh, for users and, I, and push those along. The reason I'm talking about computers now is because if we're doing 80 sync, yep. I computers. don't want to have clutter. Yeah, we will show 80 sync. What, uh, let's, what about if, they, if they're okay to delete? Yeah, if they're okay to delete, you can actually take this filter as is, and I'll, I'll have that in blog. I can just copy this filter. Here we go. I'm going to copy that guy. Stick it down here to delete, and I'm just going to paste it right here. And actually have a space there. So then I can take that same computer that I'm identifying, test, and if it is older than this date, or if I want to remove that and say I don't care if it's the computer test, I just want all machines, I can run this, and it'll tell all those machines that are older than seven days that have not been logged on to in seven days, I can remove them. And when I run that, with the what if. B, yeah, I'm like all of a sudden yeah. panicking my I, labs. See, away. I'm not going to run this because <laughs> the panic is insane, but that's why I showed you with test machine before. <laughs> But that's exactly how you would do this. You would actually specify this filter, which can be on any property of your Active Directory object, your last logon date. I use that because it's, it's actually a representation of the last logon field, which I think is stored in file time. It's like the number of ticks since whatever epic, like 1601 or whatever, yeah, the yeah. year 1601, it's weird. But anyway, so this is the easy way to do it, so. And then uh, there's also, once again, there's people that, 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 you know, companies, they're not allowed to delete. Nope. Sometimes they're not even allowed to move. But are you allowed to disable? disable. Because we're going to cover... Uh, Different ways know, to sync that. You guys keep talking about AD Sync. We will show AD Sync, and there's ways of saying, with AD Sync, do not sync disabled. So with the same, yep. the same logic, you can move, you can delete. How do you disable? That's right. Actually, I'll even use... I have two test machines right now, just two test computer objects, test and test two. What we'll do is I'm going to undo this, this change here just so it's kind of clean for me. And I'll take that same machine test that I've identified. I'm going to move one to the do not sync OU that we have set up. So I'm going to move this guy right here. I'm going to run this line. And it's actually going to move it. If actually, I need to remove the what if because this is for reels. Anymore. Yeah, for training reels. wheels are off. So I'm going to run this and highlight it so I know that's what I'm running. And I'm going to move it. And it moves. No news is good news, so it's moved. I want to take the other machine, test two, and we're going to disable it. In this case, we'll take get80 computer identity test two, and I'm going to disable that. Just double checking here, we run it with the what if. It finds it, looks like it's good. We'll delete the what if. Run that command again. I'm highlighting to make sure that's the right line I have selected. And now it is disabled. Yep. It's just that easy. So. All right, thanks, Chris. Cool. Uh, but before you, you, you leave, are there questions that Chris should be up there to answer? Otherwise, I'll, I'll go back up there. Cool. All right, let's switch. All right, man. Thanks, Chris. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna squish your window, dude. Enjoy. Thanks. So we're gonna go Chris. take a look at AD Sync now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah. I want I want a question first. Yeah. Dear Shane and Lex, is there a good way to keep inventory 100% in sync with AD? Currently, when we decommission workstations and remove them from AD, we have to manually remove them from PDQ inventory to keep everything the same across the board. Just trying to keep our list consistent. Thanks, Sean M. Hey, Sean. Isn't There's a, a feature called AD <laughs> Sync. Yeah, okay, so uh, some good question. Thank about you. With that. Also, Thank you. if you add them from Active Directory individually, mm -hmm. that's not an AD sync add, that's a manual add Correct. at that point, right? Yeah, for, for example, um, let's just uh, make, let's just remove. Um, Simple Rick? Yeah, let's just do that. I'm going to delete just, Oh, right Rick. here, show this right here. Oh, well, oh, we, we will. Right. I've just deleted Sim Simple Rick. Now, a lot of you might add computers thusly, and Sean, this is probably what you're doing. You're going into computer, add computers, and browse by name or something, and a new computer comes in, and uh, let's go to 
comp uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where is that? It's probably did I, did simple I rick. Right? Simple rick. Yeah, you're probably like adding it this way. And you add it. Notice uh, there is a column now. You, it's not shown by default. Here's how you can here's how you can add those columns. Thank you, thank you, like yeah. this little button right up here in the corner. Anytime you're in a collection window, this will show you. This will you know show you the, the columns that are visible, the columns that aren't visible, but you know the What's ones available. that are available. Yeah, yeah. and um, we've simply added the uh, where where is it? Added from. Yeah, added from. It was in the hidden columns to move something like .NET versions, for example. Uh, over maybe that's already in there. No, it's not. Uh, you can just double click and move that, um, and then it will show up in your in your uh, collection window. And it adds it to the end. So if you mm -hmm. want it somewhere visible on the first screen, you would have to scroll that up. You can you can move this up by selecting it, saying I want to I want to up. Or you could also drag and drag and drop. So I can come over here to .NET versions and just drag this over here. There's a couple of ways of doing it. So we, we can see that this was uh, done from 80 browse. What you're going to want to do, Sean, and, and uh, go ahead and put that question back up there because I want to call something out. So, so the, I'm going to go to the Add Computers, but you can do this from Preferences. When you hit Active Directory Sync, that takes you to Preferences under Active Directory. And what you want to do is Use the Active Directory Sync, and this is where you specify collections, mm -hmm. or pardon me, collection OUs. Uh, OUs. Yeah. Uh, you can also do security groups or just the root. You can specify the containers that contain computers that you want to automatically sync into PDQ inventory. So here, we've chosen AA Labs. That's the root mm -hmm. of the AA Labs domain. We've also done uh, domain controllers from web uh, from the web domain. Just to add to in, do an include, you see this little uh, okay, right there, right there, include container. When you click include, this is saying, I want all the computers here. Even you're not adding computers as they come in. You're just saying, when I sync up, I want any computer. In this case, the top level of web, the, the web domain. If I were to say, OK, any computer that goes in, into web, Notice the uh, include subtree. That's important if you want to, to, to handle, you, know, you, you have a hierarchy, which you mm -hmm. probably should, hopefully. Uh, you would say OK to that. And there's anything from web. Now, maybe you want the web. We've talked about the do not sync. Let me remove this. There's the do not sync. Maybe throw a, an OU or even a security group mm -hmm. out there if you, that security group can contain computers. And do an exclude. Ex when you exclude, so we grab everything in WebPDQ except for old do not sync. We don't want computers that uh, are, are in here. You fought, listened to what Chris said before. You've moved a bunch of computers here. You can just say OK to that. And then even though that is underneath the WebPDQ, you're excluding that. Yep. So any computer that's, un, that's in that OU or beneath it will not be included. Probably ought to talk about the delete mode too. We will, absolutely. Uh -huh. Auto sync enabled. You're going to want to click that. Once you click it, if you've never done it before, it will, you know, you, you'll, you'll sync up. But the delete mode is key here. There's three modes. There's import only. That that's obviously self-explanatory. It will it will grab whatever is in your include containers and 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 not grab your excludes. Um, there's mixed sync. Mixed is if you're going to have some computers that maybe aren't in OU, but you still want them in inventory, or they're not going to be in your sync computers, you can do mixed. Sean, it sounds like you want full. When you do full sync, that means you're saying, I want all the computers that are in my includes. Mm -hmm. And none of the ones and in the none ex. of the ones in my excludes. And, um, and remember, if, if, if it, the excludes are important if you're grabbing, if you're including something above it. If you're if you're grabbing something on the same level uh, OU wise, you don't even need to have that exclude. I don't. Want we'll go ahead and hit sync now. Say yes because we're we need to save that. When you have full sync, that's pretty much that 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 will do it. This yep. is going to grab. It'll everything. remove stuff that's not in Active Directory mm -hmm. or that's in the exclude that was in your. And notice you can see AD sync now. There's those of you there. Some of you have said, "Hey, I've got computers that are." 
that are, are in an exclude container, but they're not getting excluded when I sync. Why is that? Look at the added from. If they were added manually and your delete mode, I'm going to go back over here to preferences. If your delete mode is mixed or import only, if your delete mode is mixed, computers that are added outside of sync are kind of excluded mm -hmm. from sync. So sometimes it might be good just to cleanse the palette by running full sync and then going back, um, moving it to mixed and adding just a few of those computers if you've got a, a really big messed up system. Um, but I, I did want to throw that out there that uh, I'm going to put that back to mixed. You're going to want to go to full sync, set that to auto. Uh, don't Try not to be too aggressive with your sync. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back there. Yeah, try not to be too, too aggressive. Right now, the default, I think, is... It's one day, I think, is the default. My, we, we got this set to one hour. If you have 16,000 computers in your environment, maybe an hour might be a little too aggressive. Yeah. Uh, certainly 30 minutes would be, but just set the seat. The, if you're doing auto sync, set that up. This will take care of your problem. Chris had a comment. Uh, yeah, we, we've been, uh, thank you. We've been having a little ch discussion on chat, and I just wanted to clarify this for, for the video for people who ever watch this after the fact. If you're using mixed mode, be aware that if you add machines prior to you setting up AD Sync, even if those machines are then part of AD, are part of the OUs that you're syncing, because that machine was initially added to, active, or added to PDQ inventory, essentially manually, it will not be part of the AD Sync going forward. Mm -hmm. Just just be aware. That is the clarification. So it's a good idea to take a look at that column and see where things came from Absolutely. so that you can make decisions off that. Okay. Uh, was it, uh, do you remember the, um, the oh, you, was it Evil Rick or something that was in there? Uh, I think it was Simple Rick. Not Evil Rick. AD Sync. I can't remember which one it was. Oh, we, but if, there's some, if there's something that's in Do Not Sync, I think Test was in there. T yeah, Test was in Do Not Sync. Yeah, Test is not, Test is not in there. Right. So anyway, that's a way of doing it. Use your exclusions and your inclusions. That will solve your problem. Do we have another question? Dear Shane and Lex, I have been a bit slow moving from PDQ standalone to the PDQ client server. What cleanup can I do to my standalone before moving the database to the client server install? Sincerely, Dwayne B. Well, there's a, a number of things. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and say that you've got your AD taken care of. That, once again, that, to me, that's the biggest problem. Yeah. It's just stale records that, that haven't been moved. Oh, before I, I got to go, before I answer your question, Dwayne, and we'll show you this, uh, there's a couple of answers to your question. In Active Directory, if you're not allowed to move OU, uh, computer objects to a, a, a do not sync OU or something like that, if you're not allowed to do that, but you are allowed to add them to an NT security group because they can build uh, uh, AD security group, they can be, be a member of many security groups. You can exclude that security group. Just keep that in mind if you're not allowed to move. Also, you're not allowed to move, but you're allowed to disable. There's that little option right there, sync disabled computers. If you have that unchecked and you disable a computer object, it will not be, it it will not be synced over. So yeah. that's just something there. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. If you're going to get ready to move over to central server or just keeping it just keeping it uh, clean in general. Let's go to deploy. Um, a couple of things. Number one, if notice we've got 65 used uh, unused, unused files, files. In, repo in the repository. We uh, introduced a feature several versions ago. This only uh, affects install files that were part of packages um, in the repository directory. But you come over here and delete, let's say you delete, um, and we'll do band band zip. We'll delete bandy zip. We no longer have that. Uh, it gets deleted out of the database that displays here, but the install files are still ex in existence in your repository. Yep. This cleans that up. You can go over here. Uh, I just went to the repository and there's bandy soft, bandy zip. Those files are still there. One thing you might want to do is clean that up. You can set this up. By the way, this is all, all configured in, um, in, your, in your preferences. Uh, on whether or not to, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking? Whether or not to, to archive copies. Yeah, to even to even display this. Yeah. Uh, go to repository, show unused files warning in the status bar. All right. So, let's go ahead and if you click this, and by the way, this will notice it just updated to 66 because of BandySoft, mm -hmm. the BandyZip. Uh, I think it's 20 or 25. Once we, once you hit 20 or 25 files that are don't map to an existing package, 
that's when you'll see that. You won't see it for one. You'll see it like 20 or 25 right around there. Here we're seeing, oh, look at all these files that are the install don't, files that are no longer associated. Just don't use them anymore. Now maybe there's some that you do want to keep. That's where, let's say I want to keep all my DC, Adobe Reader DC continuouses. You can exclude those mm -hmm. and then they will, you know, until you remove mm -hmm. them from the exclusion, they will never be deleted. But otherwise, just do a control A and just hit delete. Delete. And it's going to delete two gigabytes worth of files. That's one oh, way I you can to do it. I went to town last night, didn't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you see that that's 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 cleared out. That's one way of doing it. And it, you know, we just saved two gigabytes a day of, the, of storage space. An important thing about that also is if you have multiple people using the same database and people are deleting files that other people may be using, it's good to get that clean before you guys start sharing. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of the best ways you can do it. Now, also remember, if you're going to move from a, a local to a central server, you can do that on one machine. Mm -hmm. One machine will be, uh, well, or one more specific, one database will become the master. So if you've got a bunch of administrators that are going to participate in the central server feature, uh, it's the one that you upgrade is the one where the collections are going to be maintained, mm -hmm. the packages. The others you're going to have to do an export and an import if you want to retain those. But really comes down to just kind of cleaning up, uh, we'll cover that right now, cleaning up some of your uh, packages mm -hmm. and your collections and your reports. Do you, do you want to jump into that, or do we want to jump into a question before I show that? Yes. Yeah. Dear Shane and Lex, anytime I need to deploy a one-off package to an offline computer, I have to create a new schedule with a heartbeat deployment. This is filling up my schedules pane with a lot of old, unneeded schedules. Is there a way to push a quick one-time heartbeat deployment without having to create yet another schedule? Thanks, Jeff F. R. You can use, the answer is yes, but, um, you know, Heartbeat, the Heartbeat feature that you're talking about is available only in schedules. You can use the retry queue, um, and that's where you say, I, I don't want to schedule this, but I want to deploy this package. Um, and then on my offline settings, I might say on the retry queue, we recommend not using the retry queue as a default. Yeah. Only use it as needed, meaning per deployment or per schedule. Some of you have it set to use all the time, yada, yada. But here I'm going to, we, we don't have it set to the default. But in this case, I'm going to deploy, I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to put offline targets in the retry queue. And then your retry queue settings, whatever you set them to in preferences. In this case, this will retry uh, that, that computer for three days and three hours before it leaves. That's one way. Not, if it was set at an hour, every hour would try to deploy to that machine. Yeah, there's there's the retry interval mm -hmm. versus the, 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 the amount of time it tries, it will attempt. So, you know, every, every hour for three days, or you can say if it's every hour and you'd say, I want to try this up to 72 times every hour, that's up to three days, obviously, you can do the math. That's one way you can do that. Um, but that's a, it's a great, it's a really good question because one of the problems we see are that I, I see our schedules, a lot of old schedules, especially those one-offs. When yeah. I go to a customer site and I'll see, you know, uh, sometimes a hundred schedules and most of those schedules were just set to run once. once. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have a schedule, we process those schedules every second. Every second we evaluate every single schedule. So what we don't evaluate is obviously a schedule that doesn't exist, should go without mm -hmm. saying, or a, a schedule that's disabled. If you disable a schedule, and you go to edit, there's also uh, enable schedule. Now that's enabled. You can see that little green. Hopefully you can see that um, or disable. If it's disabled, we don't process it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these are set to run once. They're not disabled. That means you're processing every Perfect. second all those. It really comes down to cleaning those up. It's okay to go ahead and come in and just say, eh, let's delete that. If you don't want to delete it, then at least disable, disable it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the very least. So c go through here, parse your parse your schedules, um, delete them if you can, and otherwise at least disable, disable them. That will save a lot of memory, a lot of CPU cycles, because once again, we're checking every second. Yep. So retry to answer your question is retry queue or just let's let's do some let's do some cleaning. Clean up. Yep. What's another question? Dear Shane and Lex, what is the best way to organize and keep the custom tools updated? Thanks, Dwayne B. 
Good question. Hi, Dwayne. And now we must call out a few known bugs. Um, I like your question, by the way. Um, so uh, the, the tools, if you go over here, we're back in inventory, you go to tools. You see, oh boy, we've got, a, we've got a lot of tools. Yeah, we do. And that means that when I go to my tools menu, boy, look at all those that are available. I select a computer, you know, let's, let's go down, I like, let's go to Rick and Morty here. I go to Beth, I go to tools. Boy, I see, this is just, this is. That's a lot to process. That's a headache. That's, that's, this is, you're now approaching, you know, crazy cat woman. That, <laughs> That, that is you, one, you walk, one tool walk, too far. Chris. Yeah, you walk one in One tool too far. All right. So what I would what I would recommend doing is um, organizing them, deleting the ones you don't need, and then using folders or mm -hmm. separators. And we'll show you how to do that. But if you are using inventory fourteen, um, there is a there is a known bug. It's going to be fixed in fifteen, which is forthcoming. That when you delete a when you delete a tool, it doesn't show that it's deleted right away. Sometimes you have to hit F5 to refresh or it just takes it takes takes some time. That is a known bug. We apologize. That will be resolved. Tool actually gets deleted, just mm -hmm. the refresh is not. But let's go over here to let's go over here to tools. And you let's start I'll just show you I'm gonna create a well first of all we'll delete a few. Now this is once again inventory 15 so these when I delete it will delete. Um, let's say I don't need the lookup host name or telnet anymore or info. I just did a multi-select and I just hit the delete button or you can click this button up here and it will delete them. Boom. Um, maybe now, a, go ahead. I, I want to point something out. Now, if you wanted to retain those but not have them there, you can export those. Mm -hmm. I just see Chris over there. He's like, oh, I can export them. Yeah. So and Chris, if you, you wanted you to bring it back later, you can you import I, I love tools. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know you love tools. Yeah, no, everything, so I have many tools and I, I import and export all of them all the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. And so I'm... I'm so we're going to, we can, we, you can create an old folder and move them in there. Or if you want to export, just right click on it, select export. And this is going to export a tool called R login. Obviously throw whatever you want, uh, the path you want, and it will export it. And then to import that, it would just be a, the... Control I, or mm -hmm. just go to import, select that XML file, pops it right back in. Actually, one one convention that I like to do, whether I'm exporting reports or collections, if I want to export remote event viewer, I will actually preface it with something like a tools, mm -hmm. or collections, or reports. So, it's easier so you to know, find, yeah. yeah, at a glance, I can see. Oh, I'm not importing a scan profile. I am importing a tool. So just just preface it, uh, you know, appropriately because th these are all just XML files. So if I were to delete that, and then go to Control I Import, I could go back over here to Documents. Documents. There's the uh, Tools remote, and it will import that. And we'll have and the tool back. And you can yeah, you can have that tool back. So. Again, if you wanted to retain those but not see them in the event you might want them back, it's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like on this beta, there took took a little while. Somebody watching that, mark that. I don't like that it <laughs> took so damn long. Figure Faster. that out. Now, maybe, maybe you just wanted. Do we have an old one? No, nope, let's create a new folder. I'm going to okay. create a new one, just called, you know, like, like, like keep. It's something that I'm, I want to keep, but I don't necessarily use. I'm going to add that folder. And then it's it's down here. You can just simply drag and drop. Where did, where did, the, where did it keep going? I think it's in... Uh, did it go up? I think it's in the folder troubleshooting. Did I, is, did I have that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I had that highlighted. Yeah, we'll place it where you highlight it. So we'll, we'll, move, we'll move that one down here. And then simply just like, uh, I don't want this anymore or this. You get the idea. You can just move these. Multi-select, drag mm -hmm. and drop move them to keep and then you can collapse that when you're when you select it when you select a tool it, you, you're going to actually have to go to keep to expand those yep. when, you, when you go to tools scroll on up there's keep then you'll see them so there's a lot you could clean yeah, up here definitely but, organize those make them easier and of course uh, those of you who use the tools library you can scroll down and go to customize or just go to tools there's also the tools library where you can, you know, import, import pre-made tools. Mm -hmm. As far as like syncing tools, maybe that's where you're going. That we don't really have that option right now. But this is just 
you organize it the way you want. That's that's the whole cool. That's the cool thing. And, and don't forget, in as much as there's folders, there's also these things called separators. So maybe I'm going to create a. Uh, I'm going to come over here to reboot shutdown and just right there, I'm going to import or add Drop a separator, separator line, and that just helps to organize it a little bit more. And then maybe everything under that line, I want to have older you know, older tools or whatever. So use separator lines, use your folders, use your exports, deletes, clean it up the way you want. Yep, yep. This also kind of goes for reports and, and, and collections as well, but. Yeah. Do we have another question? Uh, well, I mean, well, well, there's, we, a, well there's a lot. So uh, the same thing comes down to collections. I want to call this out real quick. Yeah, collections your collections can get stale. All right, you, you create a collection a lot of times and, and you'll never ever use it again. If you start seeing collections that you're not using mm -hmm. as much, uh, don't forget, you can, we've got a, we added an old collection. Just create a new collection, static or dynamic, call it old, and then drag any of these. Let me do it there. There we go. Drag any of these that you don't want to down, a sub of. down there. Yeah. And of course, you can also delete or export. And just uh, and just change that. You can also say for old, I'm going to change the. I'm going to go to view and just change the item appearance, and just kind of call this out. I'm going to change the icon, like a suitcase. There, that's that's my old stuff. Drag one, your collections. One in. other thing about collections in our collection library, if there's a bunch of library or collections mm -hmm. in there you don't want to see, because we maintain them, we allow you to hide them. Correct. So you're you're looking at collections and you're like, you know what, for imaging. I don't use GIMP or GreenShot. This is where, and this yeah. is where we'll call out a bug in the beta. This is a bug in the beta, but let's say you don't use GIMP. You want it out of sight, out of mind. Right click on it. Go down to view. Hide a library collection. Now notice it's grayed out. That's because we've got this in view set, which is display the hidden ones. It will display them as grayed mm -hmm. out. You can uncheck that. And it, you're, it's, it's out of sight, out of mind. Okay. Now, the bug that we're talking about that's only a, that, that you, you'll see in beta one. This will be fixed in beta two. Uh, we'll hide this one too. Don't you have a collection mm -hmm. library? And then if you the, collect, yeah, absolutely. If you hit collection library, go to hidden right now. In this, they are that, truly hidden. You don't even <laughs> see them. No, normally, if you're following along in earlier versions, you go to hidden. You will see those computer uh, those collections mm -hmm. that are hidden. You can right click on them and say show them anyway. Um, for right now, if you are in the beta and you're like, oh, damn, I just hid something and I don't know how to unhide it, that's where you come back over to the collection library, view, and say, display, display the hidden. hidden collections. Oh, there's my Can two grayed out ones. I want to unhide those. Um, I want to display them, then just click the hide, which will now uncheck it. There you um, go. So out of sight, out of mind. Do the same thing with reports. Yeah. You know, uh, create uh, folders. folders for your reports, Delete export them. them, throw them out on a file share. You might need to import them at some time. But there's clean up the clutter, folks. Yeah. If there's another question, we can take it. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. Hey there, Shane and Lex. Will PDQ.com please release a dark theme for PDQ products? Thanks, Warren M. You want to <laughs> you wanna pipe in on this one, Chris? <laughs> Funny you should ask. We have this wonderful new uh, feature in Inventory 15 Beta called Themes. We have a dark theme. It's called Metropolis Dark, and it is fabulous. So go check it out on one of your uh, test machines. Don't roll it out in production unless you enjoy pain. <laughs> but check it out. Uh, let us know how you, how you like it. We're going to cover that a little bit more in subsequent weeks. Uh, in the next week, we're going to be talking about the Inventory 15 WMI, WMI. scanner. We've added a WMI scanner, everybody, just like, like the file, registry, et cetera. Um, so check that out. We'll also uh, a, a webcast when we introduce other features. Yep. We'll talk about themes and show you some of those dark themes or, or whatever you want. Um, WMI is awesome. It's, it's, that's a, it's a huge feature. We also blood. made huge changes to remote commands yes. and tools. That's true. In inventory 15. Clean up your environment, especially Active Directory. Thanks, Chris. It's you a guys, new year. start it clean, it's a guys. New year, and once again, we know that there's these uh, you know, mass hysteria out there on some of these uh, new uh, vulnerabilities. Keep stay tuned. You know, watch our watch our blogs. Watch our website. We will if if there's something that we can do to help you out. Once information solidified, patches are available. We will uh, we'll make those available. All right. If you have any questions, hit up our 
hit up our support folks. Yeah, catch y'all later. Talk to you later. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Sean M. and Jeff R., winners of PD. PDQ swag, as well as Josh P., winner of our PDQ floppy coaster. Send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. Also, pdq.com is looking for a PDQ product expert engineer, as well as a front-end engineer. You can find the information online at pdq.com forward slash jobs. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.